Hey everyone, how are you doing? I'm Mitra here and I'm gonna talk about a question that so many people ask when they start learning about data science, machine learning, deep learning, and everything that is actually related to data. Well, today, first of all, I'm gonna talk about my own experiences, how I started out and how I used these languages in order to get to what I wanted to get. And then we're going to talk about what is actually on the internet, what do experts say, and which one is actually useful for data science, which one is better for deep learning or machine learning. And then we're going to look at some indexes that show us which one is the most popular in each field. We're going to look at data from different surveys and finally understand whether or not we should learn R or Python. Well, as so many of you may know, I don't have a computer science degree and I'm not an, for example, engineer in this field. But right now I'm studying industrial engineering at one of the state universities at Tehran. And you may ask, like, how did you even get into this field? Well, because I really wasn't satisfied with my own major. I started researching and reading all these books about different, you know, careers and things that people can have from, for example, uh, being an engineer or actually starting out as someone who loves math but also likes to do a little bit of programming too. I kind of got the understanding and also feeling that data science can be something that I like, especially after reading books like Free Economics and things like Everybody Lies. I started Understanding that this is a really interesting field came a time when I had to do an internship and, you know, I didn't have a father who had too many relationships in different companies. I wasn't a trust one baby. So, you know, I had to do it on my own because I wanted to get into a field that was a little bit different from my background uh, and was a little bit more related to computer science. Not too many companies wanted to hire me or like teach me from scratch. But I said, I wanna you know, understand whether or not this actually fits me or whether or not I'm really interested in this field. So what I did was that I started applying for different fields and different positions that were related to data, data scientists, data analysts, or even machine learning practitioners. So uh, what I did after all these things, you know, a lot of them really rejected me because I didn't have any specific background. But hopefully one of them answered and told me whether or not I knew Python. That semester, actually that summer, I started learning a little bit of Python to have something to say at least when I go to an interview. And what I told that guy was that, you know, I'm not a computer science major. I uh, don't have any you know, professional background in this field, but I really want to get into it. And right, I didn't have so much background in there, but hopefully I showed that I could do so much because, for example, in the university, I used to go into too many conferences. I used to host so many of them. I like held so many free discussion sessions and I did so many things and that was what people were interested in. And hopefully after being an intern for two months, I could even go, uh, get employed there and actually work for them. And not only did I learn how to work with things like Python and different tools in it, I understood and learned how to work with softwares like Tableau and Power BI and other things that help you, for example, analyze uh, different customers or products. So actually what I did was defined under the category of someone who is a data scientist or maybe a little bit more of a data analyst. Well, one of the people who I worked for and was my superior worked with R, the R language actually. And we could see which tool in R would work better than in Python or what was better in Python than uh, when we wanted to, for example, analyze it or visualize it in R. And right now, what I wanna do is to just summarize all these things and tell you whether or not you should start with Python or you should start with R. And even if you don't know where you wanna go eventually, you can ask yourself some specific questions 
questions to understand whether or not you have to use one of these languages. So stick with me and we're gonna just briefly go over all these questions and everything that you have to know to get started. Okay, so before we get into the main questions and the main, for example, summaries and visualizations and all the analysis that I'm gonna show you from the data that I found from Kaggle and other resources, I just wanna just thank you for watching my channel and also subscribing and liking my videos. And also I'm trying my best to make these videos better. So if you have any, for example, constructive criticism or any uh, suggestions that would help me throughout this way, please leave them in the comments down below. And even if you're not okay with the comments, you can just connect me at my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my Instagram, or anything that you're you know, comfortable with. Okay, we know that both of these languages are developing each and every day, but there are some specific questions that can help you when you want to start with each of them. Well, the first thing is that you have to understand and see what your colleagues and the people who are around you, uh, for example, in your job are using. Or you have to ask yourself what you want to solve when you become a data scientist or even a machine learning engineer. And actually, what is the cost of learning this language? For example, do you have to buy or purchase a uh, specific course or does your friend actually know a lot about this language and can help you a lot along the way? For answering these questions, we have to consider a few different things. For example, first of all, let's see the background. Well, both Python and R have been around uh, for about three decades. Each of these languages have different starting points and purposes. For example, Python is a language that has been developed from the first days for programmers and also developers. But R, on the other hand, has been developed for people who are statisticians. Consequently, you can see why some of people who are actually statisticians feel a little bit more comfortable with languages like R because they were actually and essentially made for these people. But people like programmers or developers who want to get into data science feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, Python. But we have to take into account that Python is actually one of the simplest programming languages out there. It's very flexible and it's amazing for anyone who is new to programming and doesn't know how to start uh, coding. Python is actually a language that computer programmers and scientists call a robust programming language. And what it means is that you can very easily debug your code. It is very much readable for anyone. Actually, when you want to, for example, write a command, it's very uh, similar to the English language. But to wrap up this point, if you are a statistician or if you're coming from a background related to statistics, it's better for you to start with R because it's a little bit more easy for you to understand the functions and also different tools that it has for data analysts. But if you're a programmer who wants to start data science, it's better to start with Python because it's both easier to understand and a little bit more familiar to you as someone who's been into the, for example, computer science field. Let's say that you're inside a project. You want to build, for example, a product that uses data science or like machine learning, deep learning, and make like a software out of it. Because again, Python is made for developers in general, it is easier for you to work with all the different parts of your project. You just want to give a report of all the things and insights that you can get out of the data of your own company, you can more easily do that with R because it has more than, I guess, 10,000 tools for analyzing data and doing different statistical operations. So in general, there are two other things that I have to mention here. One is that Python is in general uh, a little bit faster than R, especially when you want to train a model, a machine learning or deep learning model, because as we said, it has uh, packages and libraries like scikit-learn, like Keras, TensorFlow. But also we have to mention that Python has different coding environments, or actually, as we have to say, IDEs, like it has Jupyter Notebook, it has Spider, and you can try and play around with different things and see which one works the best for you. In the case of R, we only have R Studio. Some people say it's 
good to have only one environment but some people say that no it's better to like play around with different ones and see which one is the best one well till now whatever we saw was about the details of the programming languages but let's see which one is actually trending right now which one is mostly used by the professionals by the people in different fields <music> So what we're actually seeing on the screen is the uh, website of Toyobi Index. And this is an index that's been around for uh, at least 20 years now. And it's being updated every and each month. For example, right now, what we'll see at the end point of the uh, graph that I'll show you is related to November of 2020. So all these things that we'll be seeing here is actually related to the popularity of one programming language. We can see how much each one is changing in terms of their, for example, uh, the times that they've been searched throughout Google or different search engines. So when we come here, here we can see that how every and each one is changing right now and if we just like take all these other languages out we can see that python is really going up and up every and each month you may say that this is not a very scientific index and it is right it's only just related and based on the number of times one program language was searched but in general what we can see here is that because python is used more and more uh, in different fields, not only fields uh, related to data science or machine learning, uh, people are actually uh, working with it more and more. So if you're, again, if you're in a project that people are, for example, writing a software, you can maybe relate to them even better if you know how to code in Python. <music> To learn about data scientists and machine learning practitioners so as always and as you may expect where should we go to find them Kaggle. on Kaggle, i could find this 2020 Kaggle ml and ds survey it's actually machine learning and data science survey and what this data set has is kind of like very rich data set that uh, is the record of every and each question then ha that has been answered by so many data scientists based on their different background uh different for example careers uh, different years of experience and you can see so many different things but here i just wanted to you know get a kind of insight in order to see what language is the most popular so the first Thing that I could find that was related to our topic was that what do they recommend and this is actually a question uh, that was asked from the per people who uh, answered the survey uh, and they asked whether or not they would for example uh, recommend someone who's starting to start with Python, SQL, R, or uh, other languages that you can see here. Well, the first and the uh, like most recommended language was Python. So everyone would come and say like 30% uh, actually of all the people who answered uh, said it is better for people to start with Python twice as much as for example SQL and even three times more than R. But let's go on a little bit more and see in each and every profession, what do people use most of the time? For example, the people who said they were students, we can see that most of the students are now using Python, but then we have R and SQL as other things that they used most of the time. I actually filtered these out to, you know, be able to see these three top and most important ones better. Uh, but uh, you know, after looking at these things, at this data, you can understand that among all these people, like data scientists, data engineers, analysts, the 
one group that is using R more than Python is actually statisticians. This is the group of people that we talked about. They use like, different tools, different things that R has in order to do a little bit of research and uh, do different kinds of analytical or statistical operations. You can actually go on and look at all these things in more detail, but right now I'm going to go on and see what we have here. And again, we can see that the pattern emerges. Uh, no, matter, no matter how many years of experience one person has, most people are using Python more than SQL, more than R. And actually, if you bring all these things into view, again, you can see that the people who are using uh, are, you know, data scientists, machine learning uh, practitioners who are working or like competing in competitions in Kaggle are using uh, Python more than anything else among different languages. Okay, so to wrap up, we have to say that if you wanna start learning about data science in order to get into fields like finance, marketing, or anything that involves statistics, you can start with R. In fact, it will come more in handy. But if you want to go into fields like deep learning, image recognition, face recognition, or uh, I don't know, NLP, or all these different things, you might want to try out Python. And even if you don't know which field you want to start with, I really recommend, recommend using Python first and then if you thought like, yeah, I definitely want to get into statistics, go and see how R is really related to your field. But again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked and enjoyed it. Um, and if you have a friend who doesn't know which tool to use or which language to start with, uh, I really appreciate if you share this video with them and help them out throughout their journey. Also, if you had any comments, any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below and be safe.